was it? Because obviously, if you if you, if Ollie was looking after you, let's say, um, and looking out for the best of you, how did you kind of come about going to be with Ferrari? Uh, on the academy and I guess you know moving away from Ollie and his sort of guidance so to speak well or did he help you get there uh, actually I was at Hockenheim 2016 at the end of my second year in Tony Cup and I was there just watching a race um, as sort of a guest with high tech and I think you were there racing with uh, Carlin. Carlin yeah I was yeah I remember that actually. I remember that I was you, flying. Yeah, you I, I think I broke that um, record that weekend. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I just, I just. Yeah, I remember you kicked Lando's ass on the first race. I remember that. I mean, I don't like to tell people, but you know, <laughs> Lando was my teammate that weekend. Uh, I'll get you. Yeah, see, man, I I'll remember. To, see, hopefully, if we ever got big enough on this podcast, Lando will come on and sort of back me up on this. But, but yeah. Yeah, we're not. Good. I don't want to talk about it right now because I'll be on the all the Lando fans will be just be in the comment if this gets out. It's a, no, but I remember. Do... I remember you walking around the paddock and you looked like a bodybuilder back then. Oh like... yeah, yeah. It was that was really <laughs> huge, um, mate. I, was, I mean, we've talked about it with other guests, but I was training with a, a guy called Jerry Convey. I don't know if you know of him, um, but he's now the sort of Mercedes trainer in, in Formula E as well, and he was with DTM for a long time. And uh, I was like, I was, you know, for better word, stacked for, for a single seater driver. I was way too top heavy. And everyone used to, everyone used to say it as well. Like you need to, I, I never used to see it either. I just thought I was really like, you know, like that was good. That was, you know, to look strong and stuff like that. But that's not a racing driver build, I don't think. No, I remember someone saying, oh, it's, it's good for the sponsors. Something along <laughs> the lines of this. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, that's good for the Instagram post. The political correct way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, back to uh, what happened that weekend. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was Joe who was um, racing for Prema, I think. Yeah. Maybe Motor Park, I don't know. And um, he he was obviously in the uh, Ferrari Academy back in the day. And Massimo Rivola was the, the manager of the FDA. And I remember in the hospitality, he was grabbing his lunch and I was there as well on my own, well with Tav, one of Ollie's mates, and yeah. um, and I just grabbed my lunch and went and sat with Massimo and started chatting to him. And um, he'd obviously heard heard about me because I'd been racing in Tony Cut that season, and FDA was doing sort of a partnership with them for the following yeah. year. And um, he sort of said to me, you know, what are you doing next year? And I told him what my plans were, which were to do Formula Renault with our race at the time yeah which would have been a pretty good program uh, had we eventually done it i'm sure yeah, did, didn't you go to do a race with them in nurburgring and like absolutely did mega or something like that yeah it was um well we've done we've done a fair bit of testing to be fair it's not like i just rocked up and race but um we did a race in nurburgring um lando was there jayhan was there the guy max deforney was there he was quick yeah that yeah. year in Formula Renault and I finished fourth which was which was good um and yeah I was I was massively massively prepared for that race because we'd done you know probably more running in Formula Renault that year than we had in KZ which yeah. was the program that I was doing in karting and anyway Massimo said to me you know what are you doing next year I said this this and that and he said you know why don't you come into why don't you come to Fiorano um Next month, we're doing a scouting with a bunch of young drivers. See how you get on, and and um, I said that'd be great, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Just told him, yeah, told him, told him exactly what he wanted to hear in a way, which was to race for Prema, which was the intended program, and in Formula Four. And yeah, I went to do that scouting, and uh, I was the quickest by like one hundred to a guy called Simone Cunati. Oh, you gotta be careful um, saying that. <laughs> yeah, it was it was close though. I remember Terrible. It, it was uh, myself, him, uh, Lorenzo Colombo, Enzo Fittipaldi was there. Your ex teammate. Oh, I love Enzo. Little Enzo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, and then you went and won the championship. Yeah. Oh, but I, it wasn't I, I, as easy I didn't as... get that wrong then. 
<laughs> well, I won the Italian championship. I lost the German one by a couple of points to Vips. Ah, uh, yeah, you had Yuri's teammate, didn't you? But yeah, it was that was so much fun that 2017 season. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's leaving leaving Ollie's circle was was wasn't great you know because i i enjoyed being with ollie and you know how ollie is he's really good on the human side and yeah. and um you know we're still good mates today but um yeah sometimes i miss that the the humor that ollie brings to the table yeah he, he's good ollie what he does okay i mean you've got he's obviously took nikita into f1 now so he knows what he's doing um high tech's a successful team as well and it's all right so um i can imagine that was hard um but then, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, we touched on this a little bit with uh, with Callum, obviously racing for Prima. But you know, from the from the outside, Prima just seems so like dominated, dominating everywhere it goes. You touch anything it touches turns to gold. You know, for a race car speak. And you know, how how is that sort of on the inside with with them? Because a lot of people, like I say, would look on the outside um, and just go, well, you know, just do they have some magic dust? And every anyone that just can, can you know finance the seat just wins automatically or is it you know it's not i know it's not like that but how is it you've got to work hard i guess with them um yeah for sure it's it seems a lot more simple when you're in there um having left Prima and gone to art and now dams um obviously i've never been with a with a bad team i've been a, quite privileged um you know, all three of those guys, all three of those teams have huge histories. But with Prima, it's I'm not sure if it's because I was in the lower formulas with them or not, but it just seemed very simple all the time. The goals were very simple. As a as a driver, you didn't ever think about, you know, roll balance or you know, the boring stuff. Um, it was just your job was to beat your teammate and that's it. Um which is quite cool, I guess, because it's sort of, you know, you don't overthink things that have nothing to do with your performance. Um, but at the same time, Prema is very relaxed. Sometimes I'd wonder when we arrived at the track and um, I remember F3 2019 when, when we were down the road, really. Um, yeah. We were I mean, very, very quick. Oh, yeah, I can say that again. <laughs> um, but we'd arrived to the track and, I swear we were the most relaxed. Mm -hmm. Our little engineering squad, we were the most relaxed guys in the entire paddock. And I, I sometimes would rock up and just be down the road and free practice and would be like, not really sure what we're doing so well. And in fact, one time I asked, um, it was actually after that race in Paul Ricard when I came through the field, I asked one of the engineers, I was like, man, like, what are we doing? That is so good. You know, like, mm -hmm. I want to know because I, I want to make sure it happens again. Yeah. And I remember the bloke snapped at me and he's like, is it your job to, are you an engineer? Is it your job to engineer the car? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm a driver. And he's like, exactly. So just drive the car. And I was like, okay. That's the last time I, <laughs> well, I was asking, I, I was asking myself the same question, but more about why you are so, <laughs> so far ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's for sure it's very relaxed. And to be honest with you, mate, there's, it doesn't seem like there's any, any secrets, especially in that F3 team. Mm. Um, it just seems like it all works. the time, yeah, we did the simple things right and we didn't take too many risks. We didn't change the car too much from weekend to weekend. The car was quite consistent, so you could sort of get on the pace quite quickly at the beginning of each race weekend. So, it's yeah, I mean, you, you probably have to ask, one of the engineers because it was yeah. uh <laughs> i'm not the guy to ask on that side do, do you think it's like sort of an italian thing though like because I, I was with um in super i did i basically did i four races in world super sport my first time on a on a proper 600 and there it was there an italian team a guy called livio Lorini. And the atmosphere in the team was just so welcoming and friendly and relaxed that it almost felt like the results and the hard work you were doing were coming easier because of the atmosphere in there. So, like, could it be, like, sort of a culture thing? Like a family atmosphere? Mm. 
Well, definitely Premer is a family, a family, uh, there's a family atmosphere there because there's obviously um, Renee's dad, who's, who's the boss of the F4 team and F3 regional. And then Angelina and Renee run the, run the F2 and the F3 international. But um, I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, it is very relaxed. Um, but in saying that there's, you know, they're not the only relaxed mm. team in the paddock, you know, mm. it just seems like, I think there's the culture is obviously uh, a winning one. Whenever they finish second, they're not satisfied at all when potentially other teams would be. Mm. And I think that makes a big difference more than anything else. It's just the the expectation to win races instead of finish P2 and P3. So, yeah. I mean, at some, yeah. at some point as well, you know, when you're constantly winning, you can constantly attract the best drivers with, you know, the best money, let's say, um, sponsors or whatever. And you always got somebody rapid in the car, which helps as well, I guess. It keeps yeah. that momentum going all the time. I mean, the opposite is it applies for some teams when they have, I don't want to say choose the wrong driver, but they have a bad year um, because the driver doesn't nails it. And then they struggle to get a good driver the year after. And it's a, it's a slippery slope after that. Well, the margins are so small in F2 and F3, really, that if you, for example, actually, I won't use that example, but... Um, <laughs> no, go on. Uh, no, no, no. It's, um, <laughs> you know, you're right. If, if one of the teams has a good has a good previous four or five years and then they sign a guy who pays a ridiculous amount of money, it then sort of brings doubt into everyone's mind who wants to go there in the future because they've had one bad season with this guy um mm. so uh, yeah you are right because the best drivers always seem to go to prema in a way um, and that helps when you have three good drivers in the same team you're mm. always pushing each other to improve you always have good data to learn from as opposed to i mean you you've always you've always been sort of the the lead driver in your f3 career yeah. especially last year well i mean since 2016 it's just been good i've only gone to places where who would who would have me basically because i didn't have the money um so yeah, if you don't have a fast teammate then you're not really you don't know where to improve yeah 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 exactly like i mean like i'm very confident in my own ability but even i will admit that at some point you know in the last two years when i was with h to be that i wouldn't have been driving as well as I could have done in a particular session for whatever reason or particular sector or corner or whatever, which would have helped me in the next session. So it does help. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, towards the end of last year, Enzo was, you know, Enzo got on it actually quite well. And uh, I actually had a little bit of data from him, but yeah, I mean, when you're rookies and the team isn't exactly on it every session, it's easy, it's easy to fall away like that. So go on, tell me how was it being teammates with Enzo? Enzo's just, Enzo's brilliant. He's so like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen him. I've seen him wound up and angry plenty of times in that last year. But he's so enthusiastic, like just about just about anything. You're like you'll go. You you. I remember we were in Budapest and we had dinner and we got in the lift to go back up just to go to bed. And uh, with uh, Dave, um, Jack's, you know, Jack Duan's manager, um, and he just get and he just goes says something like, "Oh, Dave, how about that food, man?" <laughs> he's so. He, the littlest things are so so amazing to him and it's just it's so it's brilliant to be around you just end up laughing all the time and he, the best thing is he doesn't have a clue why you're laughing um well i know enzo very well we obviously did a season together in f4 and then we've always been together in the fda for the past couple of years and it's uh, it's hilarious when you share a room with him on a training camp yeah yeah like there's just there's nothing more entertaining because he gets his phone up and he's he's facetiming all his mates in america and he's a he's a wee womanizer to be fair to him and he's got all of his, <laughs> oh, his, no. his american oh, no. girls oh no <laughs> no it, it, it's so funny mate when you're sharing a hotel room with him it's like who how do you know this person how do you know her and he's like mate I'm Enzo. <laughs> 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 oh, it's I love, I love him to bits. He's brilliant.